Hi, I'm Trent with Metageek, and in this video we are going to show you how to choose the best channel for your wireless network. But first, let's make sure we cover the basics. In 1985, the FCC allowed the 2.4 and 5 GHz bands to be used as unlicensed spectrum, which basically allowed anyone to have a low power transmitter of any kind. This frequency space is what enables us to have wireless devices in our homes and offices. Think of the wide variety of Wi-Fi enabled devices, cordless phones and Bluetooth devices, all of these take advantage of the FCC's unlicensed spectrum. Within the 2.4 GHz range, the most popular wireless band, there are a varying number of channels. The United States has 11 Wi-Fi channels, and European countries have up to 13 Wi-Fi channels. The 2.4 GHz band is where your computers and other devices access the Internet via 802.11 BG or N wireless networks. Each of the 11 channels are about 20 to 22 MHz wide, so let's do the math. We have 11 ch channels that are either 20 or 22 megahertz wide. That totals to about 220 or 242 megahertz. But wait, the 2.4 gigahertz is only 100 megahertz wide. How do we fit 11 channels into the 2.4 gigahertz band? The answer is, they all overlap. If you are using Insider to troubleshoot connectivity or throughput issues, you will have to make some basic assumptions about your wireless network. For example, you can assume each wireless network that Insider can see is active. In order to determine the best channel to set your AP to operate on, open up Insider and start counting the wireless networks you see on each channel. The channel that has the least amount of wireless networks is the one that you will want to choose for your own network, assuming all wireless networks are equally active. In other words, pick the channel with the least amount of overlap. If you are in an area with several networks present on every channel, it's okay. What you should do is choose the channel that has the average RSSI value of about negative 70 dBm or lower. When the RSSI is at this level or below, we know that the networks that are broadcasting on that particular channel aren't very loud. A rule of thumb to remember is that the, the closer the RSSI value is to negative 20, the stronger the signal, and the closer it is to negative 100 dBm, the lower the signal. When planning your Wi-Fi channel selection, the best practice is to reuse the same three channels, 1, 6, and 11, in order to eliminate any overlap for your access points. When there is an overlap happening, it means that your network has to wait for the other network to finish talking before it can start talking. The biggest thing to avoid is placing two neighboring access points on the same channel. If your wireless card supports dual band scanning, we strongly recommend investigating the 5 GHz band. The 5 GHz is where you'll find newer and faster 802.11a and and the new 802.11ac access points. The 5 GHz Wi-Fi band will have less range but greater potential for higher wireless speeds and in general has less consumption than the 2.4 GHz band. At Metageek, we call the 2.4 GHz the wild wild west of wireless. Anyone can use the 2.4 GHz band, which means anything goes and not everyone thinks twice before they shoot. Let me explain. Your Wi-Fi doesn't know how to talk to your cordless phone. Your Bluetooth doesn't know how to talk to your Sonos. The key to having your wireless devices work nicely together is choosing the channels for each one that has the least amount of noise. You can make some educated guesses using just your Wi-Fi card and Insider, but remember, you can't see non-Wi-Fi devices with Insider. If you want to really understand interference, you'll need a spectrum analyzer. We recommend using Metageek's Wi-Spy Spectrum Analyzer, which allows you the ability to visually see the interference on each channel. To learn more, visit www.metageek.net and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.